there's things in your past that you need to understand more deeply. And that's why they're still calling to you. And there are things in your past that you had, perhaps, that you need to have in the present and the future. And so you could do the past authoring program and write out your past. It, it asks you to detail the most emotionally significant events that occurred during different epochs or stages of your life. So you have to break your life into a number of stages. I think we recommended six, but you can break it into as many as you want or as few. And then to deal out, detail out the significant positive and negative occurrences you know, that stand out in your memory from those times. And that'll kind of help put the past to rest, but it also might highlight for you what it is that you're nostalgic for. And then that can help you figure out what to aim for in the future. And so, you know, it sounds like you're rather hopeless about the present and by implication the future. And, and maybe that's because you don't have a richly enough developed conception of what it could be. So you could go back to your past and find out what it is that you wanted and had, and then you need to make a plan for how you might obtain that in the future. Um, now, it, it's a bit more complicated than that because you talked about death, you know, and, and so you may be longing in some sense for a return to in a state of blissful ignorance where you weren't concerned about mortality. And, you know, the only real medic medication for that, I think that's real, is to live as worthwhile a life as you can, as full a life, so you don't have regrets. I'm not sure that so much that people are afraid of death. They're, they're maybe afraid of not living enough. And maybe if you lived enough, you could let it go when it was time. I, I think there's some truth in that. And so if you're overly afraid of death, maybe because you have a lot of unlived life in you and you can go back to the past and you can find out what you needed and perhaps had then and then you can strive to attain that in the present and the future and those exercises could at least in principle help you with that so what are you missing right what are you missing that the past had for you and maybe you write that down like well i had this and it was really important to me and i you know had a loving relationship with someone and i don't have that now i i had the security of a comfortable home life and i don't have that now so well those are things that now become ambitions right because a lack is an ambition and lack are mirror images of one another and so if you can identify what you lack you can derive an ambition from that and you might say well that's impossible it's like well you decompose it into small steps and that's complicated, but so life is complicated. So there's no way around that. I had already concluded intellectually that there was nothing good about nihilism and, and bitterness and resentment, that it was unbelievably dangerous and that it isn't justified under any circumstances. And then I entered these extreme circumstances and I thought, oh, well, this justifies it. It's like, I, I can't see how anybody could be in this situation and not mm -hmm. shake their fist at God and, and, yeah. and in outrage. But I really, really thought it through and talked to my wife about it. And, and all I could conclude was that that was wrong is that it, it didn't justify it. It's, there was nothing good in it. There was nothing helpful in it. All it was doing was hurting me. It was interfering with whatever good I still might be able to do in the world. Um, you know, the last chapter of my new book is be grateful in spite of your suffering. And, and that was a chapter I, you know, worked on and, and was doubtful about and returned to and was like thoroughly uh, what I rate about and felt hypocritical about and, and so on and so forth, the full gamut of emotional responses, but it's the right thing to do, to be grateful. It's, it's, and I'm not claiming this for myself. Mm -hmm. It's, it's tightly allied with a kind of existential courage. It's a decision. And, you know, I'm, undoubtedly there are people who've been pushed farther in the domain of pain than me, burn victims, people, you know, suffer unimaginable yeah. agony. And I would right. never dare to compare my pain to someone else's 
extraordinarily extraordinary pain. It was certainly far worse than every day that I spent yeah. in the last two years was right. worse than any day I had before that by a huge margin. Yeah. So yeah. for me, it was, well, like I said, if it had got any more extreme, I can't imagine that I would have lived through it. Um, but the, con okay. So the first conclusion was you, you still under those conditions, yeah. you orient yourself upward and you try to do good in the world and you, and you don't, if you fall prey to resentment and, and anger and hostility, however justified, not even however rationalized, but however justified, even if an objective observer would say, well, no wonder you feel that way. It's not helpful. So there is no it's good in not, it. Th that's what you said. I see no good in it. But th then I wonder, like, like I, I would agree with you. I'm inclined to agree with that, that there's no good in that. But, but you know, through, you know, there's the old cliched adage about going through hard times, revealing certain silver linings and certain benefits that you may not see in the moment. So are yeah, you open well, to that possibility of in the future, some realization? Well, I, there from has been, death. I guess that, that this thing we already discussed, I would say is of benefit, whether that benefit justifies what I went through, I would say, so yeah. would I repeat what I went through and still going through for that matter? I mean, I've only been feeling somewhat better for five, six days. Um, right. I wouldn't repeat it to learn that. Well, and maybe, I think maybe I could, you're still learning something. Maybe there's still something that's to come, <sighs> some realization. I mean, I'm not, well, I'm not, I'm not saying know, that's the case. I but. know you, I know you're not. Yeah. Well, God only knows, right? I mean, right, God it knows, wasn't yeah. until this last week that I really thought that through and realized that however extreme my pain, which was diffuse, um, yeah. um, it didn't justify resentment. It didn't justify ingratitude. It, it didn't make, certainly didn't make those things work. But then the other thing that I did realize was and people have commented on that being a difference between this book and the first book. The second book is more communitarian. There's less humor in it because I just wasn't up to humor, you know. But yeah. there's more emphasis on uh, cooperation and, and, and the social role in ethical behavior. And I think that's partly a consequence of me observing how far above the call of duty my friends and my family went while they were caring for me and not only my friends and my family but medical personnel and yeah. the general public who've been my well the general public my viewers readers and listeners yeah. let's say have been unbelievably loyal and supportive and so i've seen this outpouring of love from you know at the micro level within my family and and from my friends and from people i don't know but who i communicate with um that's well, that saved my life for sure. There's no doubt right. about that. Multiple times, right. many, many times. The reason I emphasize individual responsibility, there's two reasons. One is, well, you can start right now, right where you are, no matter what you're doing. So you have that at hand. Second, if you become more responsible, you probably won't hurt anyone by doing it. Right. It removes the convenience of the enemy. And that's given how terrible it is for us to generate, say, class based explanations of enmity or racial based explanations of enmity. That's something we really have to step carefully around. Mm -hmm. I mean, the worst crimes yeah. the human race has ever committed have been generated by class based hypotheses of malevolence, class or, or ethnicity based ethnicity. hypotheses yeah. of malevolence. It's terrible. And, and we need to avoid that. And I don't see that adopting more individual responsibility, even though it's not a cure-all, mm -hmm. it doesn't, that's one danger it doesn't pose in my estimation.